Good morning. This is Andrew Sheets with The Third Heaven Traveler. The Third Heaven Traveler is a blog about our spiritual life in Jesus Christ and Him in us who believe on Him and how we apply this existence to our physical world. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, King James Bible. We are saved if we believe that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Amen. The title of this study is Doctrine Matters. Jesus Christ did not become sin for us, but rather he was made to be sin for us. And words make a huge difference. Dear Lord, I pray this work be used first for your honor and to and for your glory forever. Amen. I pray, Lord, you'd bless this work to be used so that others who are in the Laodicean church, who are blinded by the false, perverse teachings of these perverted Bible translations and these apostate-trained CEOs called pastors and these self-appointed teachers on the internet, YouTube, and wherever and everywhere who are not in proper doctrine, but are saying perverse things that are rambling and are striving unlawfully. Lord, I first I reprove and rebuke these teachers, and I call out and pray this work be used as a witness and testimony against these false teachers using perverted Bible translations, and even those who use a King James and do not rightly divide like the hyper-dispensationalist who think that dividing the word means to chop and throw out scripture that doesn't pertain to the church. Lord, I pray that this work be used to open the eyes of those who need to learn this. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, amen. Lord, I also pray and thank you for the brethren my dear brothers and sisters, the brethren who rightly divide, who study your word in the King James Bible, who stand for what is right, and Lord, teach properly what the true gospel is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 4, who teach the Godhead versus the pagan trinity, who teach that national Israel is not to be worshipped as or even looked up as God's very chosen people. And the Judea, and to be awake against the Judaizers, that the same, the Church of Philadelphia, those who call themselves Jews but are not, Lord, as you said, the same thing happened with the Church of Smyrna by the Judaizers. In these light moments, Lord, the false teaching is coming out everywhere. Lord, thank you that we are awake, and thank you for my brethren who are awake and not asleep as the others do or slumber. Lord, we thank you. I thank you for my precious brothers and sisters, the brethren. And Lord, in this particular study, thank you for Brother Cameron for bringing even more and providing better scholarship to bring forth the importance of this doctrine that I'll be teaching on. Thank you, Lord. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Maranatha. Doctrine matters, listeners. Oh, it matters. Seemingly so unimportant is the scripture of people of saying that, oh, Jesus became sin for us. No, that is a lie from hell. Now, I posted a video study on Doctrine Matters, Be a Good Berean, and part of this was I used myself as a case study and errors that I made, but then also I listed the this Blessed Hope 117, and I rebuked her, 
and exposed her for teaching her to her viewers that Jesus Christ became sin for us. Now, this woman, I've called her out before. She uses corrupted Bible translations. She just parrots like a mantra what she's heard from either her apostate church pastor or some online false teacher, and they just continually perpetuate false teaching by parroting as in a mantra over and over again till it becomes habit. Uh, also, let me make a note of this. A lot of false teaching comes in wording, and I myself am guilty of this. I found myself doing this by what? So-called Christian music. Now, this reprobate, Chris Tomlin, I used to listen to him all the time, but let, when the Lord opened my eyes, I found song after song after song of his. And when you look at the lyrics, it is completely different from what the King James Bible states. For example, Chris Tomlin will say, became sin for us in one of his songs. Now, there's other examples. I have it in my blog studies, if you will post there. That is why I am very, very careful not to go listening to, quote, Christian music and sing along as a mantra, lyrics, because they're using scripture. Oh, yeah, Chris Tom, boy, he'll pull scripture out. That reprobate will literally be saying stuff that's completely contrary to the word of God. And many listeners by the thousands into the millions will sing along, blah, 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 that which is not doctrine. And I rebuke that man in the name of Jesus and all oh, that the other wicked workers of iniquity that sing praises to the Lord and their churches singing horrific things. These YouTube singers and these big Grammy, like these Amy Grants and on and on. And that what's her, I can't think of her name at the top, right at the top of my mind here, but there's another one who's done tremendous damage with her. Laura Dingle, Laura, that Lauren Dingle, whatever her name is, and on and on. Look at the <coughs> travesty, the wickedness of that Kanye West and the, all of his garbage people. Remember this. If the world loves you, the love of the Father's not in you. That's the first acid test. If you see someone like this emeritus body with millions of followers, and I've exposed like this blessed hope, this little sweet little angel. She's just this little sweet lady with tens of thousands of followers, right? And uh, hundreds and hundreds of comments. And, and of course, you out there, you mockers will say, oh, you're just jealous because she has all these followers. No, I see what scripture tells us. The, they they slobber on this and, and, and the comments, it's in my video. Oh, you're the greatest. Thank God for this revelation. And they're promoting, they're spewing out garbage. So in this, I said, and I pointed out one. Now, this woman, Blessed Hope, 117. I've corrected her before. Of course, she doesn't change. She just doubles down. Fine, let her go. Let her go. But among several other errors she made, probably the most disturbing was the issue of becoming sin, which is saying that Jesus exists as sin and has come into it to exist as sin, and the difference of the King James Bible saying that he being made as a sacrifice of sin. And I'm going to break this down for you. Now, so when I did the video, I said, listen, there's a huge difference. And I gave some definitions. And I said, refer to my blog link, which I always do. Those who follow me for a while, you know I always have a study link that I will refer to. And I'll say, hey, right now I'm not going into the detail of that. But for more of a detailed study, please read study research. Okay, well, uh, Brother Cameron had watched the video, and he then sent me the following study notes. He sent me an email. Now, and basically he's saying, hey, thank you for the study. I'll read what he wrote here. Now, confirmation, a few days before Brother Cameron sent this, Brother Chris sent me an email regarding this same video and stated that more explanation was needed on becoming sent, versus made to be sent, become versus to make. 
What's the big deal? Now, of course, Brother Chris understands there's a difference, but he, he kindly told me that I had gone too briefly into it and I should expound more on it. Well, here's the confirmation. So Brother Cameron saw the video and he said, hey, Brother, he, he added superior, which his scholarship was far superior to mine than I had in mind, and he explains the major, see, all I did again was explain the major differences between the two verbs and the context, the context of to make and to become, right? Now, Brother Cameron, he did the full hermeneutic discipline. He took context, exegesis, specifically the grammar breakdown further than I did. I took, did not come to the full extent, but what I left out, and the Lord he humbled me here, and the Lord brought this to me. I didn't go enough into, what, the third step of proper Bible hermeneutics and how to understand God's Word, and that's comparing Scripture with Scripture. So I'm both humbled and blessed to have this. And as I said, you know, I confess before the Lord and the brethren. I failed to properly, fully practice and preach by rightly dividing Scripture to examine it carefully. Instead, I only provided a short explanation. Also, on key parts, I need to explain more instead of asking the reader and listener, hey, read my blog links. If I'm talking about a key thing, I need to expound on it more. And I thank you, Brother Chris, uh, for bringing it to my attention. Amen. Now, I'm going to read to you the breakdown here of Brother Cameron uh, this is what he sent me in the email. He said, thank you for bringing this uh, uh, equipping and edification for the saints. He said, hey, because uh, this is all about, if you can open your Bibles, please, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. He said, that was on my mind ever since watching your video about doctrine matters, be a good Brian, where you reprove this woman, Blessed Hope 117, who perverted 2 Corinthians 5.21 into Jesus became sin. And he writes, this perversion of 2 Corinthians 5.21 is wicked, and it is wicked, people. So Brother Cameron writes, today I knew I had to compare 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, with Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. So he said, brother, Please review and correct me in doctrine on the following. So, yeah, he wants me to double check him here. So, yeah, that's why we always want someone to look. We want to have the brethren look at it, examine it, to test. You see, we are to prove all things, right? Paul tells us that First 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And I think it's verse 21 or something. And now prove literally in the King James Bible. You know what prove literally means? to bring to trial, literally to bring it to trial, open examination and cross-examine it, right? So he writes, so if you could, listener, uh, open your Bible to 2 Corinthians 5.21, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Focus on made him to be sin for us. Now go to Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Sin when it's finished, brings forth death, James 1.15. Therefore, the death, death is the price of sin. Amen. Now, high priests used to offer up sacrifice daily for their sins, their own sins, and then for the people's. We know this in Hebrews chapter 7.27. That is a sin offering to pay unto the price of sin, James 1.15. The sin offerings, such as the sacrifice of bulls and goats, were continually made because they were never enough to take away sin. 
Hebrews 10, 1 through 14. But there is no sin in Jesus Christ, 1 John 3, 5. He is without sin, Hebrews 4, 15. Amen. So, okay, with his finished work on the cross, Jesus Christ has fully paid the price of sin, not for himself, because he is without sin, 1 John 3, 5, Hebrews 4, 15, but for us, for us, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. That's your gospel. Once and for all, praise God. Hebrews 7, 27, Hebrews 9, 12, and Hebrews 10, 10. Therefore, when we are saved by having believed in the gospel, that's 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Jesus Christ has bought us. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 20. 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 7, verse 23. Praise God. With he what? He bought us with his finished work on the cross. John 19, 30. Amen. So, Here's how we do this. Now, he writes, when discerning, separating, or distinguishing its parts from another based on careful consideration, we look at 2 Corinthians 5.21 and Galatians 3.13, the following comparison emerges. Okay, 5.21, made him, separate that, look at made him, to be sin, the second part, for us, the third part, comparing it to Galatians 3.13, being made a curse for us. Now, I have a note here. This is what 2 Timothy 2.15 means when it states rightly dividing and, and, and not like the hyper-dispensationalists teach. Now, I understand there's a dispensation between, for example, the dispensation of the law compared to the dispensation of the kingdom gospel and compared like the beatitudes compared to the dispensation of grace but the hyper dispensationalists come in and they start squawking like a parrot second timothy 215 study to show thyself the proven to god a workman that needeth not be ashamed by what rightly dividing the word of truth they don't rightly divide, they over divide like a maniacal, crazed hatchet butcher with their scissors and chop out complete parts. Say, That's not for the church. The church is only Romans to Philemon. Uh, Hebrews, that's to the Hebrew people. Wrong. It's in my study. Oh, the book of Revelation, that's for the Jews. Wrong. Part. Yeah, they're all in one. It's in my studies. But see, what rightly dividing means, divide, and it's in my study. Email me if you have questions. Uh, and I don't think I need to elaborate because it's in my study. But, but to give you dividing, rightly dividing, when you divide, you cut, you open it, you expose it, open it, and examine every part. That's what Brother Cameron is doing here. This is rightly dividing. Uh each of these two phrases is separated in the same way in the three different parts that are logically connected in the same way. Amen. Now, the units of the words to be sin is the object of the sentence. Now, focus on the object. Okay, that's huge. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, the same way that it's the, when it's the curse, the curse is the object. Now, note, object is important because in grammar, an object is a noun or pronoun that is acted upon. Focus on that. That is acted upon. So when examining these parts and considering the scriptures above regarding the price of sin, it becomes clear that to be sin is synonymous with a sin offering. It also becomes clear why to be sin is not the same as sin. That is because a sin offering is certainly not the same as sin. To be sin is not appending a redundant 
is not the re uh, pending of redundant words to the word sin, but it profoundly changes the meaning. Amen. Now, that's what I did in my study. I just said, hey, look, let's study the difference of just made versus become regarding the same issue. Becoming is literally being made to make sin. Uh, moving on, therefore, to turn, made him to be sin for us, and to made him sin for us, this is to say Jesus became sin, amen, which is a perversion of the word of God, amen. Therefore, made him to be sin for us is synonymous with what? Made him a sin offering for us. God, that is Jesus Christ, had made himself a sin offering for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, in him. And in that blessed hope woman saying it's through him. No, it's not through him. It's in him. It's huge. If you're going to be, if let's say you're saying the Lord wants me to be a Bible teacher. I you know, love God's word. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And you have all the zeal in the world, like this woman does, obviously. And I see so many young men like they, uh, you know, clickbait stuff. And there's another young man. He's got two. I want to say I was shocked, like a quarter of a million subscribers He's pushing up into the high 300 and some thousand subscribers, and it's all sensational with little clips of scripture that he says. And what? I'm like, what? Okay, your right idea. Okay, yeah. <sighs> Let's continue. So we know that words matter, doctrine matters, study, studies work. Okay, so Cameron writes, God bless you abundantly your servant your fellow servant of our lord jesus christ cameron Myra. now my response you, I, I just want to share this that listen to this i write amen brother uh, and so i wrote him this morning and this is why i'm doing this video last night when i read your superb teaching of the difference between made versus became sin i immediately realized you took what i had put together and brought it to a much higher and more precise level of understanding with more economy of words. In short, a far more superior work than I had done. Amen. Now, let me say this. I'm going to show you what I, an excerpt from the blog. I said, read this if you want more information on why made is so much different from become. And I go through it pretty extensively. I'm going to show you briefly what I wrote. But what Cameron submits here, the Lord showed me. This is amazing. Now, uh, I also realized going over your study that you, in essence, perfectly described the meaning of 2 Timothy 2.15, King James Bible, about rightly dividing and not what I pointed out about how the hyper-dispensationalists chop out books of the Bible rather than dividing every word of God to examine. Wow, I write. So I write his quote like I did. I just read it to you. And I said, this is the issue here. You compared, you broke down Scripture with Scripture. You harmonized 2 Corinthians 5.21 with Galatians 3.13. And then when you divided it out, it became the key here is the unit of words to be sin is the object in 2 Corinthians 5.21 to be what? A curse. A curse is also an object of the sentence. And that's why when you're examining these, it really means that Jesus Christ, being God, brought himself as what? A sin offering for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, brother. Thank the Lord and thank you, brother. Now, what I had written in the blog, he that hath seen me has seen the Father, John 14, 9. This is in the video. I said, hey, study the links. All right. But the and, and, and I just briefly want to say this. The perverted Bible translations tell us, first of all, they say Jesus was human. He was not. 
And then they say Jesus was born uh, into sin or became sin. But the King James Bible, as I thoroughly said, 2 Corinthians 5.21 does not say this. And you already know this. Did I go on and on? I said vocabulary lesson. To become literally means, now, now what I had written, and, and I need you to notice, what to become literally means to be, to exist as. Not to be made a sin offering, but to be sent. And then here's my supporting. You can read this. And I said, false teachers use incorrect translations for the verb to make, and they change it to become or becoming when they're translating 2 Corinthians 5.21. So I give. Now, listen, when you go to the contextual meaning of the word to make versus become, to make means what? The Oxford English Dictionary on page 1700 means to impose, to impute, to do a thing unto, which perfectly harmonizes what Brother Cameron's saying. He became a sin offering. And guess what? This also harmonizes with Isaiah 53, 6. The Lord hath laid upon him the sins. <coughs> and again, as we point out, the Godhead versus Trinity, God does not practice bow, worship, sacrificial, sacrificing his son on the cross. No, God said, I'm going to send my boy to die on the cross. No, he brought himself through. It's in the studies. Email me. But Jesus Christ, who is God himself, gave himself, offered himself as the perfect sacrifice and imposed that and basically impugned like charged uh, uh, as like charges of sin upon himself it's in there it's just all in here here now we can all we also look at the scriptures matthew 3 3 isaiah 43 isaiah uh, matthew chapter 4 19 i list all this out and I also, in Romans chapter 4, specifically verse 8, now blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Impute is synonymous with impose. This is the purpose, contextual meaning of to make. And make, we know that made is the past participle of make. Okay, so if someone says, oh, make, made are different. Okay, well, now, where did we get the phrase, Jesus, he became sin, who knew no sin? This comes from everyday variety of sources. Now, again, this is in my blog, but I got to read this. This is why I got to read more of my blogs instead of just saying, read the links, read the links, read the links, because people don't. They just don't. It's, hey, it's human nature. I understand. But Chris Tomlin, his lyrics, now, if you open the blog to read all this, but it says here, I write, this was a couple of years back, I wrote this. It says, his lyrics and his church jargon that pervert the King James Bible. Listen to this. It's not at all according to scripture. He tickles ears and they clap. And, and hey, hey, guilty. I used to drive to work. Seriously. And I would sing along with Chris Tomlin songs. Amen. Praise God. And when the Lord opened my eyes, I'm like, my dear Lord, thank you. His words are just twisted. They're lies. And, and, it, and it was like a mantra. And that's why the Lord asked me to look at mantra and how we find pop culture in the so-called Christian music world. That's why Matthew 5, chapter 5, verse 4 says, Because straight is the gate, narrows the way which leadeth to life, and few find it. Now, mantra... It's originally it's Hinduism and Buddhism, by the way. Hinduism was the foundation of Buddhism. Also, the Catholic faith, Catholicism, and Hinduism are linked. Also, look at Judaism. When I, I'm not, I'm talking about not the Mosaic law. I'm talking about the Talmud and all that. Hinduism. Now, a word. Now, a mantra is a word or sound repeated to aid concentration and meditation a mantra is given to a trainee 
What? To mediate, to, to imitate the teacher. And the teacher initiates him. Unlearned, non-King James Bible reading senos, that's Christians in name only, they go around in willful ignorance, prepare parroting, squawk, squawk, Jesus became sin, Jesus became sin. And next thing you know, it's a habit. Additionally, the, the perverted Bible translations, they change the syntax, that's the word order. They change the, it completely change words out and remove words. They're cursed. God, God says whoever takes or adds, oh, that's only in the part of Revelation. No, that's the book that Revelation closes out the word of God. The NIV, for example, would say, well, my NASB is okay, or my ESV is just fine. I use the new King James. It says perverted. Read my studies. The, they literally say the full context. When you do a full analysis, they have God created Jesus Christ with no sin and then made him sin and exist as sin. Uh, I, I mean, but, okay, study to show thyself approved unto God. Become literally in the context of Second Timothy when we look at it. When we look at the word become on page 187, the condition, it's to be in the condition or the state or the existence to have attained. That means to literally become sin. That's blasphemy. Uh, anyway, so you can read this for yourself, the synonyms of become, endure, to hold, to inhabit, to obtain, persist in, prevail, that it's, it's unbelievable. But when we look at made to be, literally, as the King James says, and what Brother Cameron brilliantly listed, it means to be fashioned. Oh, fashioned. Yeah, there it is right there. I took this right out of the Oxford Hard Copy Compact Dictionary, and then I took the word fashion, and I looked for synonyms, and there it is, to be, what? To be patterned, modeled, but in the mode, literally, to be a sin offering, a thing offered. Now, we know, if we looked at, Flip, we go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 8, and being found in fashion as a man, that doesn't mean he was a human. He was patterned after. It was offered as he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. We know that when perverted, reprobate, apostate Bible scholars take the definition of make and change it to cause a person or to become, to exist, this does not stand up. To harmonizing scripture with scripture. Okay, I'll close this study here, and I pray, and this is all, close this out. Uh, I just, Lord, thank you that you're going to open eyes. Thank you, Lord, for those few, the very few that, you're, that are going to come out from among them. And this late hour, Lord, I thank you. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, amen. Maranatha.